In this video, I want to talk about Boolean operations. And this is by far the best way to build very complicated geometries. And with practice, what you'll learn to do is look at something complicated and you'll see it as a combination of simpler primitive shapes, rectangles and circles and things like that, just combinations of that. And if you've been watching this sequence of videos, you've already seen a little bit of that. We've made sort of a dartboard, we made a Pac-Man, and these were combinations of other things. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about just the Boolean operation itself to give you an idea of what it can do. So the first thing we need to do is create two objects that partly overlap so that we can experiment with different ways to combine them. So I started with a simple linear mesh grid. We have a grid that's physically 10 wide, 10 tall, and 100 cells wide and gets calculated to 100 cells tall. And we calculate our standard linear mesh grid. Let's go ahead and create our first object. And there's no reason to make anything complicated here. So call build object, object one, and we'll make a rectangle. And we'll do this by the, the positions for the, the left and the right and the top and the bottom of the rectangle. So let's have the left side of the rectangle be at one. And we'll have the right side be at six. We'll have Y1 be at, let's say, four. And Y2 be at, let's say, nine. Okay. So object one, O1, will be X greater than or equal to X1 and X less than or equal to X2. And in fact, by doing this, we've already been doing some Boolean operations. Now we're just going to talk about it more specifically. And we'll end y less than or equal to y2. OK, now let's visualize that first object. Visualize object 1. So we'll do a subplot. And we're going to have three subplots wide. So the, the first one will be object 1. The second one will be object two, and the third one will be objects one and two combined through various Boolean operations to get an idea of what is possible. So one, three, one. So one subplot tall, three subplots wide, and we're plotting to the first subplot. We'll use the image SC command, XAYA, and we'll look at O1 dot apostrophe because we're looking at arrays and not matrices. Axis equal tight so that we see everything properly proportioned. We'll give it a color bar and we'll also give it a title to remind us what we're looking at. And this is object one. Let's go ahead and run this. Make sure I haven't made any typos. And I heard a beep. Okay, so there is a typo in there somewhere. Oh, I forgot an and before this last operation. So I did make a mistake. Okay, let's hit run. And there we go. So we see a nice square. And what we'll do is we'll put the second square up here so that they overlap a little bit. OK, so I'm going to copy and paste that code that we use to build object one. And now, whoops, we're building object two. So we're going to build an O2. We'll label it object two, put O2 here. Otherwise, the code here will stay the same. I'll just change all the stop and start indices. And I'm essentially going to swap the numbers. What we use for Y before, we'll use for X. So we got a 4 and a 9, a 1 and a 6. And we want to go to the second subplot. So I think I did everything correctly. Let's go ahead and look at this. All right. So we have two squares. And they will partially overlap in around the middle of the grid. We will copy this one more time. And so here we're going to uh, practice Boolean operation. And then down here, we're going to visualize the Boolean operation. So we'll eventually call this B for the Boolean. And we'll give it a title, Boolean. And this will be plotted to the third subplot. Okay, so we don't need any of this code. We want to do a Boolean operation. 
So let's start with just A. So we should, oh, sorry, not A, uh, object one. So we should see just object one in the Boolean operation. That's not even really a Boolean operation. We can put in object two, we should see object two. And now we're ready to start doing some things. Let's put in O1 plus O2. Now what we see is we have zeros out here where there are no objects. We have ones where there are objects. And now we have twos where they intersect. There is uses for this. Uh, this is useful if you somehow want to differentiate and put different material properties out here where the objects are alone than where they're intersecting. But it is rare for me to do this. I, I would tend to just like to see ones where there's object and zeros where there's not. So in which case, the pure addition is not very good for that, but it is good if you want to somehow come back and differentiate between the intersection and where the two objects were alone. So let's try this with an and. What we see is we only get ones where object one and object two exist, which is where they intersect right here in the center of the grid. So the and is an intersection. Let's try an or. So an or combines them very much like the addition operation that we did first, except we can't tell now where they intersect. That is treated the same as out here. This is what I tend to do most. And so I just like ones where there's object and zeros where there's not. I tend to not do it the other way, but there have been times where, where that was useful. Let's try, instead of a logical operation, let's try a dot multiply. And what we see is this acts like the AND operation. Because when I'm doing a point by point multiplication, I'm saying one times zero gives me a zero. And really the only place I'm going to get a one then is when it's a one times a one, which is right at the intersection. So a point times is really the same thing as an AND operation. What else do we have? What about an X or object one, object two? So an exclusive or is like an or in that either object will come up, but when both objects exist, well, then it's a zero again. So that's an exclusive or. We could put a little tilde before that and we're inverting the exclusive or. I think that's called an exclusive nor. And there may be a built-in MATLAB for that, I, I don't know. That's another option. What if we said, not just O1. And what we see is we've inverted it. We actually have ones outside of the square and zeros inside the square. Well, let's get really crazy. What if we did something like XOR of O1 with O1 and O2? What would this give us? Now what we've done is we've isolated just the first object where it's not crossing the other object. So we sort of clipped the intersection out of the first object and we've also ignored the second object. That can be quite useful if we want to clip sections from, we want to use one object to clip a section from another object, like making a mouth on Pac-Man, for example. That might be a good way to do that. So, there's an infinite number of possibilities and combinations with Boolean operations. The whole trick to this is to look at a complicated geometry as a combination of simple primitives. And we can do these Boolean operations to cut pieces out, add pieces, and do other things. So I hope this was helpful to you.